Welcome to Pray Freedom on Study Faith. It's week one, lesson one. Today we're going to be talking about the first and the last words of Jesus. And the title is Called and Empowered. We all know the significance of first and last words. In the upper room, on the night he was betrayed, Jesus shared some last words. They were his last words before his arrest, and so Jesus was preparing his disciples for life without him. They were coming to the end of three amazing years full of intensive, mind-blowing experiences. They'd seen Jesus heal the sick, cast out demons, open the eyes of the blind, the years of the deaf, and he'd raised the dead, turned water into wine, or a few fishes into food for four or five thousand. He had walked on water and calmed a storm and so much more. And the disciples had seen all of this up close and personal. But that night in the upper room, having taken on the role of a servant and washed their feet, he started to prepare them for life without his physical presence. I think if you love Jesus, you'll sometimes wish you could have been there with him. Certainly, the disciples were going to be sad and miss him. And so Jesus, in his last words before his arrest, says something quite mind-blowing. He said, it's good for me to go, because if I go, then the Father will send the Holy Spirit. As we read on, we learn about the counselor, the teacher, the spirit of peace, who will empower us to do the work that Christ started. But this wouldn't just be some watered-down, nostalgic, memorial fun type activity. Jesus was talking about continuing his supernatural work and explains that thanks to the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives, they would have the same power and authority that he had. In John 14, 12 to 14, Jesus said, I assure you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and he will do even greater works than these, because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. How could that be possible? Isn't the basic truth of Christianity that we're all depraved sinners that are capable of doing nothing good? How can sinful people ever dream of doing the same works that the Messiah, the Son of God, did, let alone greater ones? The answer comes immediately. Jesus said in verses 15 to 17, that is John 14, 15 to 17, If you love me, you will keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of truth. The world is unable to receive him because it doesn't see him or know him. So Jesus was saying that he's going to give us the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, a person who will be with us to lead us and to guide our thinking and remain with us. But take note, the world cannot receive, see, or know the Holy Spirit. Furthermore, the Holy Spirit is given if we love Jesus and show it by obeying his commands. For Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and then I will ask the Father to give you the counsellor. Do you love Jesus? Why not write, I love Jesus, in the chat? Now. Do you keep his commandments? Right, I try to sometimes, mostly, or I want to. Why don't you write those things in comments right now? So Jesus said, if we love him and obey him, he will ask the Father and the Holy Spirit will be given to us. So it's our part to love Jesus and to express our love for him by keeping his commandments. And it's his part to ask the Father to give us the Holy Spirit. If we have the Holy Spirit with us, then that's like having Jesus with us. So that makes the idea of doing the same works that he did a lot more conceivable. 
This course is about getting free and healed ourselves and learning to minister to one another. And although we will learn some prayers and some helpful steps that we can go through, it's not about a formula, method, or a technique. Rather, the goal is to open our hearts to the Holy Spirit and let him do the works of Jesus in and through us. When we're full of the Holy Spirit and we step out to heal the brokenhearted and set the captives free, then we're doing so because Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Word of God, the creator of the universe, has entrusted us with this assignment. All it takes is for us to come into agreement with the Lord, to love him, to obey him, and then to receive him. The teacher, the counselor, the spirit of truth, our precious Holy Spirit. He'll breathe life into our prayers. Without the Holy Spirit, everything we learn in this course will be empty words. Furthermore, it's vital to understand that receiving the Holy Spirit is not an event that we can look back to in the past, tick the checkbox and then carry on in our own strengths. Some people are naturally strong intellectually and their danger is that they rely on that strength to minister. So they'll think up solutions for a person. Others are strong pastorally. They're good at providing emotional support. But to minister supernaturally in the way that Jesus did is all about going beyond these natural talents so that the Holy Spirit working through us can do the impossible and transform lives. So in the upper room that night, Jesus instructed us to abide in him. That is, we should be like the branches of a vine, always connected. He said that we would be in him and he in us, just as Jesus is in the Father and the Father is in him. And this is the secret of being empowered to do the same works and the greater works also. So what are the works that Jesus was talking about? Well, wherever Jesus went, he said stuff and he did stuff. He said in John 14, that if you don't believe me because of my words, then at least believe me on account of my works. So there were his words and his works. Obviously, the words means preaching, teaching, presenting parables, and leading people to faith through talking. Words. But when he talks about his works, He's referring to all the miracles that he did thanks to the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in his life. In particular, he supernaturally fixed people's bodies and he delivered them from evil spirits. In his gospel, Dr. Luke introduces the Lord and mentions that he started ministering in Galilee. But the first words of Jesus that he actually records are found in chapter 4, where Jesus announced his purpose his mission statement, so to speak. And this course is called Deliverance Foundation. So I want to show you how deliverance was central in the mission statement of Jesus. So in Luke 4, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty or freedom to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Notice that there's a double reference to setting people free. First time it says proclaiming freedom, and the second time it says setting free the oppressed. This focus on deliverance or setting free is especially noticeable in Mark's gospel. You want to read it through one day, just looking at all the references to deliverance. Wherever Jesus went, he healed people, and evil spirits manifested and he cast them out. Now, Jesus was not the first teacher or prophet to come to Israel, but he was the first to cast out demons with a word. This was new and unique, and according to Mark 1, 27 to 28, it's the reason why the fame of Jesus spread throughout the whole region. The emphasis on deliverance continues in the commissioning of his disciples. So the Lord never says that he called his disciples and he gave them power to, for example, multiply food. It says that he gave them authority to heal and to cast out demons. 
And it doesn't seem like they had a lot of training first either. So in Mark 3, it says that he called the 12 and he gave them the title apostles and then he gave them authority to heal and cast out demons. First words again, very important. If we keep reading Mark's account, we have a couple of chapters of Jesus showing them how it's done. And then in Mark 6, he sends the apostles out to do this exact work. They were instructed to call people to repent, to cast out demons, and to heal the sick. Later on, he sent out the 72, and the pattern was the same. After the resurrection, he commissioned his disciples once again and instructed them to carry the gospel to the ends of the earth and to pass it down over time to the end of the age. Again, last words. We talked before about his last words before his arrest. His last words before the ascension put the same focus on supernatural ministry. Jesus promised that these signs will follow those who believe. In his name, they will overcome various perils like snake bites and poisonous drinks. And listen carefully, they will cast out demons and heal the sick. We also know that Jesus breathed on them and said, receive Holy Spirit. But wait in Jerusalem until you receive power from above. So once again, we have these two key messages. The commission to do the same works that he did, which is to heal the sick and to cast out demons, and the power to do that, which comes from the Holy Spirit. Never once did Jesus suggest that there would be a time when preaching the good news, healing the brokenhearted, or setting the captives free would no longer be necessary. He never said, do this until you have a printed Bible or until you have two or three more competing Christian churches in your town. But he made his promise as an open-ended statement to all who believe anywhere in the world and down through history. As people have been faithful witnesses down through history, somehow the words of the Lord have reached us, whether through the printed or spoken word or through modern media. We've heard what Jesus was focused on and how he wants to equip us to do the same. So, are you up for that challenge? Why don't you write in the chat right now? I'm up for the challenge. And let's pray together right now. Lord Jesus, you said that it's good if you go away, because then you'll send the Holy Spirit. And you said that if we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, then we can go to the ends of the earth and take your message so that the Father be glorified through us as we heal the sick, as we cast out demons as we preach the gospel. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and to teach us and to equip us in the coming weeks so that we can be effective and obedient to the calling that you've given us. Amen. As nice as it is to hear somebody else preaching and teaching about the words of Jesus, it's much better to have those words inside of you, have them available to your spirit when you need them. So as part of this course, we also have audio recordings uh, of the Bible verses that I've been teaching from. So I want you to take those audio recordings into your daily life, listen to them, listen to them focused, listen to them when you're not focused, take them jogging, take them for a walk, and, and just have those words of Jesus going into your spirit, and then use the quizzes that we have also got on the here on Study Faith so that you can test your understanding and test your recall of the important verses that we've been basing this teaching on. Okay, and I look forward to seeing you in the group session.